Whenever you hear someone say, well, God told me, your defenses should immediately go up because there is a long history of people claiming to hear private, personal, special revelations from God who have led people astray. For instance, over the years, there's been dozens of people, false prophets, who've said that they knew the exact date when Jesus was going to return and the end of the world would happen. And people would quit their jobs and sell everything because of those dates, which were wrong. And those were false prophets. I was a victim of a false prophet, Mary Baker Eddy, who said that God revealed to her this truth that she created as Christian science. And the religion encourages the congregants to listen to God's voice and to believe whatever comes in. Joseph Smith is probably the most well-known example of someone who was a person who claimed God came to him in a vision and revealed the truth to him. Joseph Smith said that God said the Bible was corrupt and that he, Joseph Smith, would receive the absolute truth. Joseph Smith also claimed that God told him to marry multiple wives and commanded his wife to accept this. For a long time now, Bethel Redding has also claimed that God speaks private personal revelation to them, and they've been running a school to supposedly tell people how they too can hear God. And we've been exposing that, but now Bethel has hit a new low and has lost their mind because they've opened this new online school where for $40, you too can hear from God. Now, the reason that this is an especially horrible idea is because now people around the world will have the idea that they are hearing from God and these false teachings will come through without any guardrails because there's no supervision. Are you reading the Bible? Are you comparing what you're supposedly receiving from God with the Bible? That's where it gets dangerous, as we'll see in this video today. For example, let's take a look at Chris Vallotton, who says that God told him to make this new online school. And I want to introduce you to the idea of spiritual intelligence, actually thinking like God and thinking God thoughts. And I'm like, you can have IQ, you can have EQ, you can have AI, but if you don't have SQ, you don't have it all, baby. And we start introducing technologists to the mind of Jesus. This whole masterclass actually began as that experience. That experience opened me up to a whole bunch of ideas. And you know, as you can imagine, I, later on I'm thinking, well, if God knows about cars, what else does God know about? I want to invite you, join the journey. You're going to be in this masterclass. You're going to have a great time. You're going to get some impartation. Let's take a look at what else he claims God told him. Chris Vallotton claims that God spoke to him through a vision of an owl. Take a listen. And, I, and the Lord started talking to me about the fact that the owl is wise, the owl is nocturnal, sees the darkness, and knows who's who. <laughs> and the Lord said, the mascot of this season is not the eagle, but it's the owl, because I'm going to take people, I'm going to take the prophetic gift that's on this house and I'm going to make it nocturnal. I'm going to make it live in darkness. Chris Vallotton also claims that God is instructing him to put bubbles of purple light around people for protection against bullets and rape and disease. Crazy, right? Listen. I mean, I know this isn't biblical, but it's not a non-biblical. I have to say that now because all these people right terrible things but i i see this purple bubble that i have a prophesied over people that there's this purple bubble and it's kind of like the glory the lift of my head and the, the lord's a shield about me i see the shield like a purple force field like kind of looks like an egg that god puts people in and it's like impervious to biological things like sickness and disease and it's impervious to bullets and bombs and and uh, things like uh, abductions, rapes, murders. And uh, it's impervious to, 
just it's like it has its own atmosphere so i just i don't know what that is but i just released this purple bubble and tragically lots of popular televangelists have claimed that god has spoken to them in ways that are wild and unbiblical including kenneth copeland and jesse duplantis listen to them what they claim that god is telling them it's crazy i want to tell you something the lord said to me um <clears throat> I've, I've gone into a, a very um, how can I say this, Lord? More than just a little exercise program. And uh, I'm in very serious training. Praise God. I'm working out hard. And <clears throat> And I heard this. He said, Kenneth, I sacrificed my body for yours. He said, now you are sacrificing your body for mine. So I didn't want to do that. But then I have a mandate before me. Should the Lord tarry, I will live and preach this gospel till I'm 120 years old. As I was going home, the Lord, real quickly, he said, Jesse, do you like your plane? Now, you know, I thought that's an odd statement. He gave, I said, well, certainly, Lord. He said, do you really like it? And I thought, well, yes, Lord. He said, then he said this, so that's it? I didn't know how to handle that. I went, what? He said, you're going to let your faith stagnate. And when he said that, that shocked me. I went, whoa, wait. I literally unbuckled my seatbelt, my plane. I stood up. My pilots looked around and said, do you need something? I said, no, no, I'm talking to God right now. And, they just, <laughs> and he went back to flying. You couldn't have done that on an airliner. No, sir. No way. Stand up and say, what'd you say, Lord? No. Okay, no, yeah. And the guy sitting over there saying, what the hell does he think he's doing? <laughs> you can't do you that. You can't do that. No, no. Friday night at 924. Now, Gloria and my usual routine is <clears throat> we go to bed early and I listen to a couple of messages by Brother Hagen, watch the 700 Club and by, you know, 10, 10, 30, turn the light out. Well, we had just listened to Brother Hagen, that first message, and suddenly the word of the Lord came to me. So I, I jumped up and got my notepad <laughs> and wrote it down, 924. This disease called CODV-19 will be over much sooner than you think. Christian people all over this country praying have overwhelmed it. Give me all the glory, saith the Spirit of grace. And many, many people will come to know me through it. I'm still Lord over this nation. I'm on the throne and faith in me changes things. And like them, before I was saved and before I started studying the Bible daily and went to seminary, I also thought God was speaking to me. I thought that actually every thought I got was from God. And that's how I wrote a lot of my heretical blasphemous books. I did these videos every year in December for the following year where I claimed that God was giving me a word and a theme for the coming year. Take a listen. This card really goes back to the fact that God is omnipresent, meaning everywhere, including inside of you, in me, and everyone. And what that means is you have an inner truth detector. So when you're questioning, is this real or is this true or not, you go within and take a deep breath, and your body is the most accurate divination tool there is. Your body will tell you when something's true or not. You'll feel it. It clicks or it doesn't click. You'll get what I call angel bumps or goosebumps that tell you. Uh, you'll get tightened muscles that tell you whether something's the truth or not. And dear God, dear Lord, please give me clear guidance that I can impart to everyone who's part of this video. 
as to the meaning of these cards. All right, here we go for January. I never thought that Bethel Redding could be any worse than they already have with their fake glory cloud. He's, he's wanting to give us as much as can bless us and promote us without destroying us. And so it's happening tonight as the church is camping around the presence. Glitter coming through the air conditioner, they're fake feathers that are supposed to be from angels. And the videos that I've done about Chris Vallotton teaching new age concepts about bubbles of light for protection and having spirit guides that are animals. And now they've topped themselves with the worst idea ever. Take a look at this from Chris Vallotton's Instagram account. Chris Vallotton, the so-called prophet of Bethel Redding, says that he's decided to team up with some sort of institute called SQ for a three week long activation series where as an online community, they collectively practice hearing God's voice for specific people and places. For the mere price of $40, you too can hear God. This is so dangerous. And let me tell you why. This is what I used to teach in the new age. Well, I taught how to hear God's angels, but it's the same thing. And the methods that they're using in this course are identical to the psychic development courses I took as a New Ager and that I taught and wrote about as a New Age teacher. They're also the methods that led to the heresy and the blasphemy that a man I used to tour with named Neil Donald Walsh, who wrote the best-selling books, Conversations with God, and has given many workshops on how he supposedly heard from God things that completely contradict scripture and led to the popularity of relativism, which is the unbiblical concept that there's no such thing as absolute right or wrong or good or bad. Supposedly God told Neil Donald Walsh that and through his best-selling books, he popularized that so that people are learning to follow their feelings and follow their hearts instead of what God outlined in the Bible. God says you may not have anything you want. You may not have anything you want. And I was puzzled by that. And I said, you know, well, I don't understand. I thought that when you want something, when you need something, when you are hoping for something, you go to God and you ask for it. God said, no, no, you, you don't understand how the system, you don't understand how the system works. Or that even that there is a system. But here's how the system works. Everything you could ever ask for, you could ever have now or ever ask for in the future, you already have right now. You already have all of it. You simply are not experiencing it. Because everything that has ever happened is happening now and ever will happen is happening right now. And so, it is for you merely to reach into the sea of infinite possibilities and call forth the reality you choose now to experience. See, God only knows one word. Yes. God has a very limited vocabulary. <laughs> God says, yes, yes, yes. Yes to what? Yes to whatever you think, say, or do. God says yes. The so-called activation of hearing God's voice leads to destructive heresies and blasphemies such as Neil Donald Walsh has in his books that are still sold today. In his book, Conversations with God One, Neil Donald Walsh has the script of his so-called conversation with God and saying that God told him that you are about to have an extraordinary experience, you are about to have a conversation with God. Neil Donald Walsh's imagination and probably demons wrote through him, it wasn't God, and said that God said, I do not love good more than I love bad. Hitler went to heaven. And that so-called God that he was talking to said, when you understand that, you will understand God. And his so-called God says, everything is acceptable in the sight of God, for how can God not accept that which is? 
To reject a thing is to deny that it exists. Just blasphemy, absolute blasphemy. His so-called God says, your ideas about right and wrong are just that ideas. They are the thoughts which form the shape and create the substance of who you are. And look at how he capitalized who you are as if Neil Donald Walsh is a God himself. Just blasphemy. Neil Donald Walsh's God that he got from his so-called conversations with God, thinking he was listening to God, says, if there was such a thing as sin, this would be it, to allow yourself to become what you are because of the experience of others. This is the sin you have committed, all of you. You do not await your own experience. You accept the experience of others as gospel. Neil Donald Walsh also falsely claims that God told him that reincarnation really does exist and that Neil Donald Walsh is on his 648th life. And the belief in reincarnation is so spiritually dangerous because why did Jesus have to die in the cross in our place if we actually had other chances? We don't. The Bible says that we die once and then comes judgment. There's no such thing as reincarnation. And yet, this is an example of the dangerous practices of people saying that they are hearing from God and sharing what they're getting as a demonic message, wishful thinking, or their imagination. Neil Donald Walsh claims that God told him that in his previous 647 lives, he was a king, he was a queen, a serf, a teacher, a student, a master, a male, a female, a warrior, a pacifist, a hero, a coward, a killer, a savior. There's only one savior, Jesus. That he was a sage, a fool, and that God says, you have been it all. You guys, that is new age, occultic, Hindu, gobbledygook that is so dangerous that could point people away from a life of repentance, of knowing that I have sinned before a holy God and I need to repent. Metanoia, I need to turn away from my sin and I need to study the Bible and devote my life to pleasing God. So that's an example of the dangers of telling people, oh yeah, you can hear God. Yes, you've heard God. And that is what Bethel Redding's course is doing, giving people the nod and permission and official blessing that they are hearing from God. This is so dangerous. His God says, desire is the beginning of all creation. It is the first thought. It is the grand feeling within the soul. That sort of false teaching from false gods, like Neil Donald Walsh's teaching, leads to covetousness, which is against the commandments, and also materiality, and a focus on what you can acquire instead of looking to Jesus for the only thing that matters. He's the pearl of great price. The only thing that matters is our salvation. Jesus did promise us that needs would be met, but it's not about wants. The Bible tells us that, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding. When you listen to Neil Donald Walsh and Chris Vallotton, you can see that these are them reaching for some sort of eisegesis, meaning me-centered meaning in these thoughts that they're getting. It's also from pridefulness. When I was a New Age teacher, standing in front of sold-out audiences, getting standing ovations everywhere I went, it went to my head. And after a while, I started to believe that every thought I got was a message from God and his angels to me. And I wrote down every thought I got, and they were the basis of many of my heretical blasphemous books, which I pray will someday no longer be sold or used in this world. So Chris Vallotton in his Instagram post encourages people to grab a pen and paper or a fresh note in your phone and start recording the information that you receive as you navigate the different tabs in the activation. That word activation is not biblical. That is actually new age and occultic. It implies that God's going to do something new or fresh when the Bible is very clear that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even more so, in Hebrews 1, God tells us that long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, 
through whom he also created the world. So God doesn't need to use prophets anymore because that was before Jesus came to earth and died in our place and took the punishment that we all deserve for our sins. And then he, of course, rose and he ascended. He's at the right hand of the Father and he will return to judge us all. And that should give us pause. Jesus said that if we love him, we are to obey his commandments. And the first commandment is to love the Lord with all your heart. How do you love God? That word love in the Bible also means trust and obey. And trusting in the Lord with all of your heart and leaning not on your own understanding, that can be violated by people willy-nilly thinking they're hearing from God. This course is such a bad idea from Bethel because this is going to unleash a lot of people claiming to hear from God. Horrible ideas. I thought I was hearing from God and God's angels as a New Age teacher. And the ideas that I penned and wrote about and taught about and followed myself were horrible. I thought I was hearing from God and God's angels, and I followed the so-called advice that I thought I was giving. And it was horrible advice, things that have shattered my life and my son's life and people who followed me their lives. And I'm grieved over that. And I am appealing to Chris Vallotton and the people at this SQ Institute to repent from this. Do not offer this course and please don't take it. This is so dangerous to have people at home taking some sort of course where they think that they're going to learn from God and no one is monitoring this. Since polls show that the majority of people have not read the whole Bible, I think it's something like 5% of professing Christians, this is people who don't have the guardrails that you need when you think you're hearing God to compare it to scripture as we're commanded to do. And by example, in the Bereans of Acts 17, 11, how can you compare it to scripture if you've not read scripture? The apostle John, who was the closest apostle in Jesus' earthly ministry to our Lord and Savior Jesus, warned us all in his first letter, chapter four, to test the spirits. Now, he was primarily talking to folks who were being deceived by Gnostics. The application, though, of his warning is still for today. Are the spirits confessing Jesus biblically? When you are told to meditate and to go within and to listen for a message and to notice your feelings and your thoughts and your words and your visions, that's what I taught in New Age but it's not going to be something that passes the test of the spirit. It's not going to confess Jesus biblically, nor will it point you to a biblically sound church, nor a Bible study, nor anything that the Bible would prescribe for wisdom, such as praying to God for wisdom and he will give it. But the point is these thoughts that we have, as God says in the Bible, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. We have to stop imagining that God is giving us private, personal revelation. He's not. What he's doing is he is pointing us to his word, the Bible. And as we read the Bible, the author of the Bible, the Holy Spirit, the God-breathed scripture, will be illuminated for us, and we will receive wisdom and conviction, which means turning away from sin, being pointed away from our sins, through reading scripture. That's how God speaks to us. And people will groan and say, oh, that's so much work. It's, it's not work. It's an honor. And aren't we honored that God loved us enough not only to send his only begotten son to die in our place for our sins, but to give us his word through this book, the Bible, that's translated into almost every language and that it's free of charge. You can get a free app. I'll put a link in the description below. You can find Bibles for next to nothing at thrift stores. So his word is where we talk with God, where we get the information from God, not through taking a silly, hokey $40 online course. So in this post on Instagram, Chris Vallotton invites you to see if you can get a message about a man they call male 624 and to get messages about him to prove that you're really hearing from God and to test that. And this is the method that I used in one of my first New Age books. This method of just going within and seeing what you get about someone is a classic psychic development, occultic method that people are taught. 
So it says for this activation, again, activation is hypercharismatic, occultic, new age verbiage. It's not biblical. Um, it says you will be asking, and it doesn't say the Holy Spirit. That's often a clue that it's charismatic. Um, it, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit is what it should say. Uh, we'll be asking Holy Spirit what the Lord is saying about male 624. We have provided a few questions for you to press into. Again, press into is not a biblical phrase. That's a charismatic phrase. With your different prophetic receptors. That's not biblical. The receptors, it makes it sound like it's some physiological part of our body. And then he says, i.e. seeing, hearing, feeling, and knowing. This is exactly what I taught in my psychic development occultic courses before I was saved. Seeing, hearing, feeling, and knowing is exactly what I taught in my blasphemous, heretical, new age courses. And in the verbiage of new age, it is clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and claircognizance. I call them the four clairs. And the thing is, that it does work in terms of getting something. You do get messages. The question is, are they really from God? And I can give you the answer and save you $40 and a lot of time right now until you know they're not. Demons take advantage of people who want desperately to hear messages outside of the Bible. And your imagination and your wishful thinking kick in. And they will tell you what you want to hear. They'll tell you to quit your job. They'll tell you to divorce your spouse. They'll tell you to stop your medical treatments. They'll tell you to move across the country, sell your home, all sorts of things that may not be wise for you and would be unbiblical if you followed them, such as divorcing. So be careful about these so-called messages from God. Next, you are supposed to ask Holy Spirit, because they don't say the in charismatic, what type of man is male, number 624? How does heaven see him? This often looks like you are statements. For example, you are a deliverer of hope or you are a carrier of peace. Stroking the ego is what is the difference between a biblical prophet and a psychic. The biblical prophets all called people to repentance. They called people to repent and come back to the covenant of God. They didn't stroke egos. They didn't sit there and say, oh, you're a wonderful person. You deserve this. You were born for such a time as this, twisting Esther, Bible verses. That stroking the ego is a red flag that you are dealing with someone who's involved with occultism and new ageism, psychic work, and it's dangerous. Look at this Bible passage that warns us, 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. The first part, we already know that the devil masquerades as an angel of light. The devil can masquerade as God's voice, as the Holy Spirit's voice, as a deceased person's voice. But look at verse 15 in 2 Corinthians 11. This is really important to understand that people who are servants of the devil who's masquerading appear to be workers of righteousness. They seem like really good people. They seem like godly people. Oh, they wouldn't take advantage of me. Oh, they wouldn't tell me a lie. That's what I was doing unknowingly before I was saved. I was 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen, 15, who was an unknown servant of the devil, but appeared to be a worker of righteousness. People always told me, you're an angel, you're a goddess, you really have helped me to connect with God, I feel closer to God now, la 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 la, lies, lies, lies. Be careful of anyone who claims that they can teach you how to hear the voice of God. Next, the post says, what gifts or skills does he carry in his tool belt? This often looks like a you carry or you have or you hold statements. Examples, you carry a voice that commands the room or you have the gift of discerning spirits. Again, stroking egos is not part of biblical prophecy. The biblical prophets, and I studied them in seminary, getting my master's degree in biblical and theological studies. It was 56 units. I got straight A's except for 1B, highest honors. And one of the assignments that we had to do was write a extensive paper about each book of the Bible. And I wrote an even more extensive paper about Isaiah 6. And I studied each of the biblical prophets for these papers and for seminary. And the pattern of those prophets is that they were hated. They weren't popular. They weren't rich. They were often persecuted, killed, 
uh, maimed and injured by people because they didn't like the bad news that people were hearing from the prophets that said, repent, come back to God, that judgment was coming. They warned about the impending exile and people needed to turn back. That's different than what is being taught here. God loves us enough to warn us. He doesn't stroke our egos. It's not about glorifying ourselves. That's what the New Age does. The New Age is all about trying to lift yourself up by your bootstraps with positive affirmations. I am perfect, whole, and complete. I'm a good person. People love me. Where Christianity is all about praising God, praising God, not looking for activation of what tools you have in your toolbox. This is just silly nonsense and it's dangerous. And then supposedly with this activation post, we're supposed to ask God to highlight a scripture for him and explain why. It says, promises, hopes, and strategies are anchored in the word of God. Example, the book of Nehemiah has strategies for you in this season. Or celebrate this season because God will turn everything around for good, Romans 8.28. Okay, so there is validity in sharing scripture with others. We are exhorted and commanded to equip others with scripture. Absolutely. But the examples they're giving here is, again, what's called eisegesis, reading yourself into scripture instead of scripture reading itself to you. Okay, well, this is all about everything's going to turn around for you. That might be giving someone false hope, and that would be something false prophets do as we read about in 2 Timothy 4. So be careful of giving false hope in the under the guise of, well, God told me to give you this scripture. A lot of times what happens is when you're sitting with someone and you're supposed to be giving them a reading, a prophetic word, there's this pressure on you because you want to please them. You want to encourage them. You want them to feel better. But that might come through in a way that is false hope that you're giving. So be careful of that because that's cruel. That's not loving. We just want to be there with the person and pray with them in a biblical way, but we don't want to offer twisted scripture that would make them think that things are going to get better when maybe it's not God's will for them for that particular situation to get better in the way that that person wants. That's imposing our will on God's will, and it doesn't work that way. So the bottom line is, please be careful and avoid these hokey courses that promise you certification as a prophet or prophetess. I almost fell for that when I was first saved. Please be careful of this particular course that's going to somehow miraculously teach you to activate and release your anointing as a prophet that can speak for God. That's how books like Conversations with God are born. That's how books like Physics of Heaven are born with people without guardrails of biblical truth saying they're speaking for God. We're not. You can read someone the Bible and that's God's word that you are speaking. And if you want to hear God speak, and I'll quote Justin Peters here. If you have to wonder whether or not God spoke to you, he didn't. Okay? If you have to wonder whether or not God spoke to you, he didn't. Well, I just really feel like the Lord is trying to tell us, said nobody in the Bible ever. When God is speaking, God is speaking. It is crystal clear exactly what he says. To quote myself, if you want to hear God speak to you, dear friends, there's one way I guarantee you, you will hear God speak. Read your Bible. If you want to hear God speak to you audibly, read it out loud. 100% guaranteed, you will hear God speak. The Bible gives us warnings and guardrails against these false prophets. The Bible says, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. These warnings about false teachers and false prophets should give us pause. The devil lies to us. He's the father of lies by mixing in some truth with destructive lies, destructive heresies, as the Bible calls it. So we've got to be careful against thinking, well, 
this prophet got this right, therefore the rest of it might be right. When I was a psychic before I was saved, I would get information that I couldn't have known on behalf of my clients, and that seeming truth would come from demons who feed this information to false prophets, and they masquerade as an angel of light, or they can masquerade as pretending to be the voice of God. They can masquerade as pretending to be your deceased loved one or the Holy Spirit. Nonetheless, Bethel Redding, who already is outrageous with their fake glitter glory cloud coming from the air conditioner vents, and they're saying it's the presence of God, with their new age book, Physics of Heaven, with angel feathers they claim are falling from their ceiling, and so many other atrocities, including false prophecy, leading people astray. Now they're going to unleash a whole army of false prophets on the world by saying, oh, yes, you're hearing God. And they're using these hokey New Age occultic teaching tools that I also used to use for teaching my classes on psychic development and mediumship and teaching people how they could hear the voice of God and God's angels. These four clairs, John the Baptist was the final prophet needed. After that, God spoke through Jesus. And then this was all recorded. The canon, the book of the Bibles is closed. And that was closed way before Constantine, way before the Roman Catholic Church. And all scripture is God breathed. All scripture is sufficient for all that we need. It is authentic. It is inerrant, meaning without error. The whole Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 is one cohesive narrative story of God's plan of redemption through Jesus. But for some people, apparently the Bible's not enough, and they want to get some sort of special, I'm going to say it, prideful revelation from God themselves. And granted, the Bible doesn't talk about some of the modern inventions of this life, it doesn't talk about airplanes or computers and such, but it gives us the principles to have wisdom. The Bible says if we need wisdom, we would pray to God and he will give it to us. We can also find wisdom through reading the Bible and the Holy Spirit, the author of the Bible, will illuminate biblical passages and that's how God speaks to us these days. And we can also take counsel with people who are mature Christians, who really know the Bible, who, who live godly lives. Nobody's perfect. We're all sinners. But we can seek counsel with those who are endeavoring to please God with their lives. Wishful thinking is, oh, I hope God tells me to quit my job. Oh, I hope God tells me to move to this country I want to move to. Oh, I hope God tells me that it's okay to divorce my spouse and, and marry this lover. Oh, I hope God tells me this and that. So that wishful thinking that contradicts what God says in the Bible and which probably is not God's will for you can cause tremendous destruction. Demons who take advantage of vulnerable people who've emptied their mind and are focused on themselves, and that's a form of self-glorification, by the way, and the demons will pretend to be the voice of God. They'll do whatever it takes to deceive you and get you to follow them instead of Jesus. So we have to be so careful. The Bible says that understanding the thoughts of God is not for us. Jesus is our only mediator between humanity and God the Father. In Romans 11, 33 through 34, we're warned, oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. Listen to this. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? And that echoes what God said through the prophet Isaiah. God said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. In other words, we humans do not have the ability to reach the level of God's thoughts. They're beyond our comprehension. And so we depend upon the Bible that God dictated through humans that he chose. Many of them kicking and screaming didn't want to be 
chosen to be a prophet. And they were persecuted terribly for that job. But the Bible is sufficient to get insights into God's will for you. And even more so, the Bible condemns those who dare to say they're hearing from God when they're not. For example, it violates the third commandment that's still for today that says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. That means using the name of God and saying, God told me this, that would be breaking that commandment and using his name in vain, because God didn't tell you that. Your imagination did, your wishful thinking, demons, or maybe a combination of all three. So you're breaking one of God's commandments that's still for today if you say, God told me this. The Old Testament condemned false prophets throughout, and probably one of the clearest passages is in Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22. God said, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. In other words, True prophets were held to a standard of 100% accuracy. And every prophet in the Bible, everything came true. Incredible details came true. And some of them are still already and not yet. And Agabus, by the way, his prophecy did come true. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise to try to justify false prophecy. I'm living proof that following what I thought was the voice of God and his angels led my life and my children and many people who followed my old new age work into destruction. I was told to do things that are unbiblical, that were very harmful to me and my children and other people. And I was convinced it was coming from God. So this is so dangerous that Bethel Redding dares to say that they have the ability for people to take an online course and learn how to hear the voice of God. And they are going to unleash this army of false prophets that are going to go out and continue the destruction of all these people who are getting false prophecies and deceiving themselves and others with wishful thinking, imagination, and demonic messages. It is criminal. I'm telling you, I'm horrified that Bethel's doing this, and you should be too. Please warn others about this. Please, if you're enrolled, cancel your enrollment, and please pray and that they would admit that they're wrong and close up the shop, because I am so concerned about the aftermath of what's going to come out of this. And if you meet anybody who is saying to you, God told me this, or God gave me a word to speak over you, be so careful, because that often is the person, and they might have the best intentions and a loving heart. Maybe they know the Bible enough to quote a few scriptures. If it's scripture, okay. I'll, I'll listen to you quote a scripture that God brought to your heart. Great. But if you're giving me something novel, I am not going to pay attention to it at all. And even more so, if, if someone's saying, I, God gave me a word for you, that person could be a, a false influence on the heart and the mind of that person. That person might obsess about that. Over the years, um, as I used to be a professional psychic before God saved me and I renounce that now and, and have repented for it, I would find that people would put more stock in the messages I gave them as a psychic than they would to advice that they got from their doctors, from their parents and elders. And people, they love the mysticism. They love the mystical. They love the supernatural. They're drawn to it. But it's dangerous. It's a doorway to demons. We have to be so careful. You know, I just want to say that I do believe it's possible God would send a real prophet. I mean, he's God. He absolutely can do whatever he wants. But that prophet would also have to adhere to God's standards of being 100% accurate. No fails at all. And I haven't seen that happen. Have you? And I doubt that Bethel Redding's seen that happen. They're excusing false hits, false prophecies, and saying, well, Agapus did it. No, he didn't. 
Agapus prophesied accurately Paul's arrest, if you look at the details of his arrest in the Bible. When Bethel's supposed school to hear God tells you that you can get messages from your feelings from God, that is so dangerous because the heart is deceitful and wicked, and who can believe it or trust it, as the Bible tells us. The Bible also teaches that before salvation, we have a heart of stone that is rebellious against God, that has fleshly desires that we can't control, that we can't resist. And so if we're talking to unsaved people and saying that, oh, you can learn to hear God, and they've got this seared consciousness and the stone heart, how could they possibly hear God? And it's through the filter of their fleshly desires. It doesn't work that way. So maybe people taking this class are saved. But there again, if they don't know the Bible, they won't know that they are sinning against God by using his name in vain, by following their heart, by claiming that they're hearing God when it's clearly something false that's their imagination or wishful thinking or a demonic message. So Bethel reading through this class is encouraging sin, encouraging people to break the commandment of not using the Lord's name in vain. This is horrifying. Again, pray for them that they will repent from this huge mistake that they're making. I hope this has been helpful to you. I pray for the people of Bethel to repent from this sort of madness because this is just so dangerous and insanity. And I pray for people who are signed up for this course that they will repent and disenroll themselves. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.